Another thing that we can do, another thing that I did in the code down here, is change the size of the cow. So I'll copy that and put that in here and we'll see what that does. So I'll just put that right here. Now this one is current underscore cow, the x scale equals the y scale property, and this is a built-in property in Flash, and I set them both to 50, which will make the heads 50% their size on the x and y axis, or the x and y scale, the width and height of the object of the movie clip has now been reduced to 50% its original size. All right, last but not least, down here in the code, and this is an important one, we'll grab this and we'll paste it in. This goes into the cow move function, and that is after we increment the speed, I run an if statement to say if this current cow's y position is greater than or equal to, we want to put here the bottom of the movie. The bottom of the movie is 400 pixels tall, right? The width of the movie is 550 and the height is 400 of our flash movie. But when it gets, let's say here to 330, we want to remove the movie clip from the stage. We don't want the cow falling into infinity. So now you'll see that as soon as the cow gets right here, it, get, it disappears right about here because I've told it as soon as it gets to a certain place on the y-axis to remove itself from the movie. That way it's not incrementing um, and basically falling into infinity, which will eventually slow down our game if the game lasts more than a few minutes. So ultimately, though, you could change this to 400 so that it looks like it falls right off the bottom. So now it looks like it's going to fall off the bottom, but in fact, it's actually disappearing once it gets past 400. Now that we have everything coded up for our falling objects, and they're all falling, and this is good. So this, this code that we had before has now been completely explained and worked with. We can combine both of our movies. We have the falling movie here. So what I'll do is I'm just going to um, go to the timeline, and I'll turn off the eyeball on this, right? So this is now our falling objects. There's our falling cows. And we want to combine it with our cowboy character who moves back and forth. So Let's see if we can do that. Now, to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, I'll just copy all of this, copy all that, control C, go over here, and I'll make a new layer, and control V and paste it, right? And I'll get rid of this text, and I'll just take this and arrow this down. And so here is our cowboy character. Notice his name is Cowboy. Now when you copy assets and movie clips from one object to another, the key thing you want to remember is that hopefully you've named each of your movie clips a unique name. In other words, if you have in this movie like uh, objects that you named the default name like symbol 1, symbol 2, well that's not going to work when you go to copy those symbols over to your new movie. Your, uh, and and because symbol one, if they're both named symbol one, then the one from the one movie will try to overwrite the other one. So they need unique names. So you can see now in this new movie that we have here, this is our our attached movie file. You can see that I have the cow movie clip. I've got that text right, which I don't really need. And then I've got my cowboy on the stage. The cowboy's name is cowboy still. So that's important. Now all I need to do is copy the code. So I'll go back to the first movie. Open up the Actions window. Let me click on the Action Script frame first. And I'm going to copy all of the code for the cowboy. Just copy that. And then go to the New Movie. And I'm going to paste it at the top. So I'll go down a couple of keyframes here and paste that at the top. So now I have all of the code in one movie. I've got my move cowboy function, my on enter frame handler that calls it many times per second, and then I've got my drop timer and everything. So now if we hit control enter, you can see we have our cowboy who runs back and forth and we've got our falling objects which he can catch, right? And so now all we need to do is we need to basically create the collision detection code 
which will help us to um, catch the objects. Uh, so that's what we need to do next. So part three will be how do we set up the collision detection so that we can catch the falling objects.